Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to your Daily Penguin, our tour through that Penguin Classic wall behind me, book by book and author by author. What a fun time we've had this whole year revisiting my penguins, going through them one by one. Instead of my original idea in 2019, to do them blocks at a time is just part of a normal library tour. We would have been missing out on a lot of fun if we'd done that. Uh, and Although most of our tour through My Penguin Classic Wall has been unplanned, sort of random, bouncing around from era to era, lately I have imposed a few plans. I I followed out uh, the end of Preptober, or no, not Preptober, Victober, uh, the booktube event in which we celebrate the literature of the Victorian era. I celebrated right along with the end of Victober, and there's another big booktube event that's in November. That's Nonfiction November, hosted by Olive, at a book Olive, and all of her merry band. Uh, I encourage you to go over. I'll try to remember to leave links to everything down below, because what, what an enormous pro project they have done this time around. Social media, prompts, discussions, live streams, I think. There's so much going on. You'd be if, if you are a fan of nonfiction, it'd be criminal for you to miss it. And if you are weary, leery of nonfiction, well, you're never going to get a more congenial invitation to join the fun, because nonfiction is a lot of fun. And I thought that to go along with that, I would uh, concentrate on nonfiction on my November penguins as we wind down our Penguin Classic March. <laughs> because keep in mind, there's only going to be a couple of weeks in December that I'm going to be making videos. Maybe, maybe two weeks, maybe three, maybe two and a half, and then no. So... We're running out of time, but we have still all of November, and today we're doing another collection of letters. This time it's the letters of, uh, of Vincent van Gogh. Uh, this is edited and selected by Ronald DeLieu, who I believe is a Van Gogh expert. Let's see, he has a, a, an impressive resume. He's the director of the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam since 1986. I don't know if he's still there. This, is, this volume is 20 years old. Uh, and he was trained as an art historian in universities in Los Angeles, California, and in Leiden. Uh, and it's this is translated by Arnold Pomeranz, and it's a one of those just terrific volumes that Penguin either commissions or buys that is not only the stuff that's advertised in the title, but also everything else that you need to enjoy and understand that stuff. This is uh, a great introduction, great notes, and in between each letter, setting it up, teeing it off, and giving it uh, context are biographical sketches. Historical sketches, integumentary tissue to bind the letters together and give you a whole narrative. And this volume also, I believe, includes uh, Van Gogh was big on yeah, it was he was big on doodling in his letters uh, and drawing in his letters. So was I back in the days of uh, snail mail correspondence. And this volume includes all of that. So as a as a, a volume introducing you to this artist. You could scarcely you could scarcely go wrong. Your know, penguin today is a strong recommend if you're interested in this artist. And there's another recommend, a penguin adjacent recommend. Some of you will be able to see it coming. You Whovians will certainly be able to come see it coming. At one point in Doctor Who, uh, the Matt Smith Doctor, one of one of my least favorites. He's an egregiously hammy over actor to the point where you just wince when you're watching him. David Tennant's bad enough, but this guy, this kid, is so much worse. Uh, and Nevertheless, a lot of his episodes are quite good. Uh, a lot of the moments in his episodes are quite good. There is uh, <clears throat> a personal favorite of mine in his run uh, as the Doctor. He meets the TARDIS. He meets his ship, which has briefly been given sentient human form and is able to speak to him. It has a kind of artificial alien or um, artificial intelligence anyway, but now it gets to, to speak to him. And it's a it's an exciting moment. He large Matt Smith almost ruins it because he's so bad as an actor. He's just so bad in the role. Uh, maybe if he hadn't been given a Dixie cup full of amphetamines before every scene, it might have been salvageable, but uh, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't I, I'm well on record anyway as not particularly liking little boy doctors. I like my doctors to have a little a little wear on the tires. Uh, but like, for instance, if we're talking dream casting for a, for a doctor, for the doctor in some future season, dream casting for me, since the doctor, rather famously, with only one exception, does not throw punches. He doesn't solve his problems physically. He solves them by being right and by being compassionate and by being smarter than his foes or learning faster than they do. 
So there's no reason to have an action star as the Doctor. <laughs> and, and so for, for uh, dream casting, well, absolute dream casting for the show, the thing they can't afford would be Maggie Smith. Uh, but if not, there's, there's an actor who they've recently got to play in a few seasons. They've got to play the first Doctor. Uh, because Peter Hartnell is dead. And they, they got the same actor who plays uh, one of the arch villains in Game of Thrones. It would be wonderful if we had a Doctor Who season, or maybe two, with him as the original Doctor, just having adventures that we never knew anything about. That would be fantastic. In fact, I wouldn't object to that just across the board. Get a whole bunch of actors to... to who bear either a syntactical or a physical relationship to a whole bunch of canonical doctors and just give us seasons with uh, lost adventures of all of those characters. That would be fantastic. Just fantastic. Although, I don't know if I, my heart would probably break if I saw someone else playing Tom Baker. Uh, but one way or another, uh, that was a great moment when the Matt Smith doctor meets the TARDIS. Uh, but another great moment involved Vincent Van Gogh, where, where the doctor brings Van Gogh to the museum to confront a special exhibit, a room full of his own paintings. Ah, and it's amazingly good. The episode itself is subpar, but that moment is amazingly good. And if it exists on YouTube, I will try to link it down below. Even though, even you non-Doctor Who fans, I don't know what you're thinking, what you're doing with your lives, but if you're not a Doctor Who fan, you're still going to love that moment. Uh, but anyway, your Penguin Classic for today is... Uh, I recommend the artist, of course, as you some of you are going to be able to see, you're going to be able to guess that his art doesn't really do anything for me. The further you wander from Edwin Lancier, the less your art is going to do something for Steve. Uh, but nevertheless, it's this is fascinating as a volume to read, to just read him. And I believe it puts to rest forever any idea on any biographer's part that there was ever any time in, Go in Van Gogh's life when he wasn't crazy. <laughs> these letters make it perfectly clear that he was barking mad his whole life. That makes them more interesting to read. So I'm, uh, I'm going to leave you with a recommend. I couldn't, I don't think I'll make any other videos today. I, I'm a little bit preoccupied, but I couldn't let today of all days go by without seeing you, your faces just a bit. So we'll do a Daily Penguin and that's it. It's the letters of Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, now I'm getting ready to do uh, sneezing for the rest of the day. So I'm going to wrap this up before that starts and I will see you soon. <laughs>